Welcome back, folks. And we have a goal to do next. Our second goal is going to be how do you calculate inventory costs under the perpetual system using FIFO? Again, how do you calculate inventory costs on the perpetual method using FIFO? Once again, I want to use my big T account with you approach because I think that helps. And you can compare that to the Horngren 10th, ed 10th edition book if you're using that. It's on page 369, but if not, it won't matter because I'm going to copy down all the information I gave you on the first pink cast into this inventory account and you can watch what happens when the first stuff in is the first stuff to flow out into cost of goods sold. And remember, my purchases and inventory are always shown on the debit side. My cost of goods sold are always coming out on the right hand side. So let's start again. We had some beginning inventory on 8-1. We had two units at $350 for a total of $700 each. So our beginning inventory. Then on August 5th, I purchased four more. Sorry about that, I had to answer my phone. Where were we? August 5th, four units. We purchased at $360 each. So that brings us to $1,440. Now we sell on August 15th four. Which four do we sell? Well the first stuff in is the first stuff to go. So two at 350 will have $700 going first and that layer is done. But we need two more. So we'll use two of those. So two at 360. Two times 360 is $720. So the four units that I sold on August 15th come out to be $1,420. Then I buy 12 more units on August 26th. So August 26th I buy 12 units at a total of three hundred and eighty dollars each. Twelve times three hundred and eighty is forty five hundred and sixty. Now on August thirty first I sell ten units. Which ten did I sell? Well we use FIFO first in, first out. So those two at three sixty are gone. And that layer is now over, so I'll cross it off. And I had 10 that I sold, and I've taken care of 2, so I'll have 10 left. Or I'll have uh, 10 sold, and I had 12. So I need to get rid of 8 more, sorry, at 380. And if I take 8 away from 12, I have 4 left. Boy, I'm making that hard, aren't I? Let's go through that once more. I had 12 at 380. I sold 10, two from a prior purchase. That leaves eight left. Eight came out of those 12. 12 minus eight is four left. And eight at 380 were sold. Two times 360 is 720. Eight times 380 is 3,040. So I sold a total of thirty-seven sixty for that purchase or that sell. What does that leave left in ending inventory? What does that leave in cost of goods sold? Well, I have four units left from the last at three hundred and eighty each. Four times three hundred and eighty is five fifteen hundred and twenty units are left. How many did I sell? I sold 1420 on 815 and 3760 on 831 and that totals 5180. So there is my ending inventory and my cost of goods sold. 
Let's use our basic formula to see how that comes out. Again, this is a good formula to just learn. I had in beginning inventory $700 from 8-1. I had net purchases 8-5 and 8-26. Add those up and they total 6000 So my total available was 6700 in ending inventory, when I go out and count, I have four left at 388, so that's 1520. If I had 6720 and I have 1520 left, the cost of goods sold must be the difference. 67 minus 5120 is 5180, and that ties into our T account. That now lets us do our journal entries on 85. Remember, we had accounts receivable and a sale of four units at $500 each. And our cost of goods sold from that sale was $1,420 using FIFO. Cost of goods sold, $1,420. Inventory, $1,420. Then we had a sale on $831. Accounts receivable was 10 units at $500 each, 5,000. Sales, 5,000. Cost of goods sold for that using FIFO was $37.60 from above. And inventory credit, $37.60. That would be what our journal entries would look like using FIFO. Cool, isn't it? Let's move on to... LIFO. Talk to you soon.